And uh, we're coming back to Israel. Israel and the West Bank have seen weeks of tension in the West Bank and building concern over extremist Jewish settlers. I-24 News correspondent Mohammed Al Qasim spent the night patrolling with a Palestinian unit in the West Bank and ran into some of that high tension. Here's the report. <laughs> Thayer is a local activist and a leader of the local protection units in his village of Karyut in the West Bank. His men armed with sticks, flashlights and mobile phones. The idea of local protection units isn't new to Palestinian villages, especially south of Naples in the West Bank, where the largest concentration of settlements can be found. The village of Duma in the West Bank is creating its own local protection units. Two weeks after the deadly arson attack that took the life of Saad Dawabshe and his 18-month-old toddler Ali, who was burned to death at the hands of extremist Jewish settlers. <laughs> extremist settlers have become increasingly aggressive with their attacks on villagers. What is it? They attacked boys and girls. The girls started screaming. We ran towards them. They came from here. We chased them to the light. Flares lit the sky over Karyut, possibly fired from a neighboring settlement, likely to scare off villagers from getting closer. This woman was walking back with her six kids from a wedding when they came face to face with an armed settler. Her daughter Sadiqa became hysterical, traumatized by the experience. We were coming back from the wedding. When they saw us, they hid under the olive tree and pointed a gun at us. Villagers in their homes act as an early warning system. Then, the local protection units are the Iron Dome of the village intercepting any settler infiltration. But tonight, no one was caught except these beer bottles. Thayer claims they were left behind by settlers for a reason. They are sitting between houses drinking. Here is the proof. Some villagers here say to protect their homes, they either had to borrow money to install metal bars on windows or sell their entire year's harvest of olives to build fences around their homes. It is incidents like the one that took place tonight, where the job of these local protection units becomes so essential to the protection of the villagers. The Palestinian Authority cannot enter these villages without prior consultation with the Israeli army. But it still does have responsibility there and share blame for the situation. First, we need moral support. We need lights, phones. That's what local protection units need. In addition to international media and legal follow-up. This area in the West Bank is home to 12 Israeli settlements and 37 illegal outposts, according to Israeli law, occupying top hills overlooking Palestinian villages. And just like oil and water, the two can never mix. Yes, and with me right now here in the studio is correspondent Mohammed Al Qasim, who came back uh, from this uh, patrolling, uh, let's say, uh, tour. Uh, Mohammed, you know, we're seeing this situation and we can say maybe that the Palestinians just uh, learn from the best. They learn from the settlers themselves who are sometimes protecting, they have their own patrolling units, they are protecting also themselves from Palestinians who are trying to get into their villages. This is, uh, you know, I don't want to say coexistence, but this, 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 let's say, way of coexistence is actually the way of violence. It's basically learning from the enemy, learning from each other. If you shoot at me, if you do whatever you do to protect yourself, I'm going to learn from you and uh, implement your ideas. The Palestinians now are creating throughout the Middle East, uh, throughout the West Bank, mainly in the central part of the West Bank, the Naples area, where more and more settlements are there. The, the hardest, most extreme settlers are there. They're creating uh, you know, uh, committees to protect uh, their villages. Yeah. They're made up from uh, local uh, youth, local Palestinian men. They carry sticks, they carry uh, phones, they carry flashlights. They go from uh, 9 o'clock until about 4 or 5 in the morning just uh, monitoring the, the villages. And uh, they communicate with other Palestinian villages in the area. Last night, when we were in uh, Karyut, the people of Kusra, 
came uh, as soon as uh, this attack happened to check and uh, lend hand to the people's uh, to the people uh, in, in Kariot. And something else that you're bringing us for, I think this is something that you've been hearing a lot lately, is the criticism that the Palestinians have on uh, has on the Palestinian Authority. We started to hear this more and more, especially after the Duma uh, incident. Palestinians, the PA always uses. Uh, area C as their excuse. Well, mm -hmm. er, this is Area C. We don't have uh, full authority over it. it. Only we have to coordinate with the Israeli army to go in. Well, Palestinian residents are saying, fine, if this is your excuse, we believe you. But at least provide us with phones, provide us with flashlights, provide us with the basic means that we are able on our own to protect ourselves. Yeah, but how can you protect yourself when you are standing in front of a gun like just this small girl? Uh, Mohamed Al-Qasim, thank you very much. For You're this. welcome.